The scene is a student house party. Two people are meeting each other for the first time. And after all the formalities are through, that inevitable question is asked. So, um, yeah, what do you study? I study social anthropology. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Do you know what that is? And now, the guessing game begins. The study of plants. Isn't it the study of tribes? Oh, it's insects. Study of insects, right? Um, <laughs> no, I don't actually know. Now, what you just saw is something that happened a lot to me whilst I was at university, including those answers. But not knowing what social anthropology is, is quite understandable because we're not taught about it in school, we don't talk about it in our culture, and you can only really choose it at university, by which time people have already chosen what they're going to study. But I've just done a degree in social anthropology, and I think it's great, so great, I'm going to make a video explaining to you what it is and why we should all have a bit more social anthropology in our lives. Let's begin! The word anthropology comes from the Greek anthropos, meaning human, and logos, meaning knowledge of. So anthropology means the study of humanity. Why study people? Well, because we all are one, and so we are all inherently interested in this. And secondly, because the experience of being a human is often a confusing and strange one, and it would help if we could make a little sense out of it. Now, humanity is a big and broad subject, so anthropology has been split into four subfields, which together provide us a holistic picture about all things human. Archaeology, studying humans of long ago. Linguistic anthropology, studying human language in all forms and its effects on everyday life. Biological anthropology, studying the evolution and ecology of humans and other primates. Lastly, there's social anthropology, also known as cultural anthropology in the US. This can be summarised as the study of human culture, society and human relationships. However, what does that actually mean? What's culture? What do we mean by a culture? What does society mean? Culture is the non-biological aspect of human beings. That is, we're not born with it and you can't find it in our DNA. It's basically a product of the human imagination. Culture is intangible in the form of ideas, beliefs, values and norms and tangible in the form of the houses we build, the clothes we wear, and the way we worship, and so on. And because it's not biological, all this has to be taught and relearnt with each generation, passed on through language, symbols, and behaviour. Culture is what makes them, them, basically. And if you've ever watched an old movie, or gone to a museum, you realise that cultures change over time. That is, they're not set in stone. As they clash and interact, new ideas, technologies, beliefs mix, and that changes the shape and appearance of those cultures. Society refers to a group of humans both geographically and culturally distinct from another group of humans. That is, they are more common with each other than with outsiders. So, for example, British society versus French society. However, some societies are capable of containing multiple cultures within them. For example, think of the TV shows Geordie Shaw and Made in Chelsea. Those people both live within British society, but their cultures are quite drastically different. Think of it this way. If society is the phone's hardware, the foundation, then culture is the apps, the software. These two areas, alongside the study of human relationships, are the core pillars upon which social anthropology stands. Kind of like how a physicist looks at the universe and asks, what the hell is going on here, and how does this all work? A social anthropologist looks at human social life and asks, what the hell is going on here, and how does this all work? Specifically, we want answers to the question, what does it mean to be human? Both in the general sense, as in, what does it mean to be human on planet Earth, and in the specific sense, as in, what does it mean to be human for these people in this particular place? And like how physicists create laws and theories trying to explain the universe and how it works, social anthropologists are trying to create laws and theories to explain human culture, society, human relationships and behaviour. That is, explanations that transcend particular people and particular places and apply to all humans everywhere at all times. Now, if you want answers to these questions, there's one thing you have to realise. There is no normal. There is no natural, there is no one way, there is no right way. Neither is there a wrong way. There is only different. What's normal, what's right, it's all relative. Okay, let me explain. 
I bet you've never thought of the cultural society you live in as odd or weird, right? The way things are organised, the way you act and talk, the work you do, it's just how things are, and to you it makes perfect sense, right? You're probably not thinking, so how does this all work, or why are we doing things this way, are you? But think about it, you came into a world which already existed before you did, and that world you came into, and the people who were in it, told you how to act, how to talk, what to eat, and so on. All the buildings, the roads, the religions were already there waiting for you. You came into a world pre-made for you, and there was no suggestion when you came along of doing things any other way, nor is there an explanation as to why we do the things that we do. For example, Dude, cover your mouth when you do that, alright? Uh, why? What do you mean why? You just don't do that. Therefore, you naturally just accept what you see and are told. And since there seems to be no alternative, you don't question it. You are told that this is the way things are, and so you come to learn that this is just the way it is. Now, look at this picture of me standing next to a man from a Maasai village in Tanzania. For him, his way of life is entirely normal. There they live in small mud huts, sleep with their cows, occasionally drink the cow's blood, wear those clothes. For him, that's quite natural. For me, it's really weird. Instead, what's normal for me is to live in a brick house, sleep by myself in a room of my own, occasionally drink alcohol, wear those clothes. But for him, that must be utterly bizarre. So who's right? We both think our way of being human is normal, even natural, and the others as weird and sort of unnatural. The answer is, neither of us are. The fact that we can both think of our way of life as normal and believe the others not to be, shows that neither of them are normal or natural. For if something was to be normal or natural, we would expect all humans everywhere to do it. We would expect all humans to live in mud huts or to drink alcohol, but we know they don't. So we can see that humans are different, and this is something social anthropology tries to study. However, social anthropology is also looking for what makes us human. What are the similarities and commonalities between us? So we can also take from that example that both of us cover our bodies in clothing and live in spaces we call home. And therefore, these things we have in common, which therefore makes them comparable, and perhaps are things that are in fact natural and are things that make us human. It's just the way we do those things, and why we do those things, may be totally different. Let's look at another example. Gender. In the West, we tend to think of boys equal blue and girls equal pink. That is, the colours are appointed to a particular gender. However, go back only a hundred years or so, and you will find it used to be the opposite for us in the West. Or you go to China and you find that they think blue is a girl's colour, and in Japan they think pink is a man's colour. Suddenly then you realise that what you consider to be fixed, what you consider to be normal or natural, isn't. You realise if we said blue was a boy's colour and they said blue was a girl's colour, we both just made it up. Otherwise, we would have both naturally have thought that blue is a boy's colour, right? And we'd expect all cultures and all people everywhere to say blue is for boys and pink is for girls. What I'm saying is we are all very much products of the culture, society and the relationships we inhabit and that these things will forever influence and tint our experience of reality to some extent. How we think, speak and act, what we're interested in, what we eat, how we eat, the clothes we wear, how we treat others, the types of houses we live in, our religious beliefs. These are all very heavily shaped by whom we grew up with and where we grew up. Moreover, you start to understand that as weird and as strange as other people may seem to you, to them, you are equally as strange. And this is one of the brilliant things about social anthropology. It makes the strange familiar and the familiar strange. It makes the exotic normal and the normal exotic. Moreover, social anthropology helps free you from the social and cultural binds that you have acquired during your lifetime. Instead of just being a product of where you grew up and who with, you get more choice and freedom in the beliefs and ideas that you subscribe to, and thus more freedom and choice about who you are in the world. So not only through social anthropology do you learn about other cultures and other people, through comparison you get to reflect back on yourself and your own culture. 
not only learning about others, but also about yourself, and therefore helping to make more sense out of your own existence. So once you realize there's no normal, it begs the question, so how do these differences come about and why? This is the role of the social anthropologist and one of the most interesting parts of the job. It's also where something called ethnography comes in, but I'll talk about that in the next video. To end, social anthropology is not so much a topic, but a pair of glasses you put on to see the world differently. And in the next video, I'm gonna teach you how to put these glasses on.